what we've got here is a genuine mystery. This is a box of magic and fun and unicorn parts. This thing will find orphans, homes, it will rescue puppies from rivers, it will take us to Mars. No, it's not. It's a broken dryer switch. And I have traced the culprit down to this. Whirlpool dryer. I'll put the model number in the video description. What it did was on heavy high and everybody, you know, men need heavy high dry. Much heat. Blow wind. It stopped doing that. And then we moved to time dry, which is kind of like, you know, pinkies out. Oh, say, sir, your clothes are still with damp. And then, um, even permanent press stopped working, and, you know, if I'd have known my clothes were being dried on permanent press, <laughs> I, I would have had to have canceled my man card. But, regardless, she is now nothing but a large, white, hulking behemoth of uh, tepid, cool air. I want to find out why. Now, these switches, from what I understand, can be acquired online for, you know, merely the blood of your children. But I figure, what's what's got to be in here, right? We got a motory bit that goes around, 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 right? And it, it makes the pixies come in and out of the various spots. This there can't be much in here, okay? It's clearly a mechanical switch, because I can hear a jingling and jangling. It's like Christmas time inside there. So it's got to be a mechanical switch. And I'm, I don't see no pins, no potting, no metal tabs. I think it's straight up held together by these two screws that hold the roundy roundy bit together. This is where your knob would go. The timer is what that is. I'm going to pull that apart and uh, see if we can get in there and maybe we can find out why. Maybe there's a wire that's come loose. Maybe a contact has gotten a little bit singed. Maybe there's a scorpion in here and it's gotten magical powers from all the electrolysis and stuff. I know things. Ooh. Okay, it only goes together one way, so I don't need to pay attention to it. Ah. Yeah. There it is. Ha. Huh. That one right there is actually stuck. It's, it's melted to this little plastic tit here that holds them separated, so now they're all uh, dried up together and... Anyways, you see all this, uh, there it broke loose, this heat discoloration, right? Looks like a wonderful unicorn fart going on right there. That's no bueno. Not good stuff. So what's happened here is either through corrosion or just contact wear. I feel like that one should drop free. Why doesn't that one drop free? Oh yeah, that one is clearly supposed to drop away. I wonder if that had anything to do with it. From, from contact wear, from corrosion or whatnot, we started to get some resistance. Resistance in the contacts. That led to heat, heat led to badness, and badness led to sadness and failure. So I'm going to see if I can clean those. I mean, I could get in there and scratch him with, like, the point of a knife. I'm still sure that one's supposed to drop away. Why doesn't that one drop away? I'm going to see if I can get them out and clean them. It looks to me like these are simply staked in. You know, that they're pushed through the plastic and then they're just held in by the mechanical force of the plastic. So I'm willing to bet that I could tap these out gently and get at those pins. Let me see if I can do that. Here's the innermost one. A little bit of contact burning, but that appears to be fine. Uh-oh. Things looking worse. Some clear heat discoloration at the tip there. And then the piece de resistance. Look at this bad boy. It has just been unicorn shat all over. Okay, so now what? Uh, to be honest, it needs a new switch, right? But I've never hid the fact that I'm sort of a, a cheap bastard. Descended from a long line of clever, cheap bastards. That is, by the way, how you get clever, is being a cheap... Or as 
Are you cheap because you're clever? I don't know, chicken and the egg. I'm going to go ahead and get in here with a, a very technologically advanced tool, some worn sandpaper on a stick, and try. <laughs> it's going to work. These appear to be some sort of silver soldered stud. Say that fast a few times. It's very soft, you know, just your classic contact material. I think this is going to work just fine. I'm sure it'll look arcing. I'm sure this is this is the culprit right here. You can clearly see there's still some pitting in there. I'm torn. I could sand that out. This is pretty soft. I could sand that pitting out. But is it going to matter? And do I want to lower the contact that much? And it was never designed. Never designed for uh, disassembly like this. I think we're going to leave the pitting. I think we're going to go on the idea that anything I do here is just some really sweet, juicy, borrowed time. Yeah, I think it was these two. These two are our main culprits. Switch must work differently than I figured. Because I see... I see zero. Zero discoloration. Zero arcing. There's nothing else wrong. These, these are our bad boys right here. You know, I'm not sure I am a cheap bastard. I just think things should work. There's nothing wrong with that. I think things should work, and then things don't work. I think that I should be able to fix said things. There's a little arc on this one. This is that funny one where I wonder why I have a contact if it never breaks contact. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to break contact. That was this first pin right here. Okay. I believe I have it adjusted properly now. Whereas before, this pin was hovering off of its perch. Now you can see that it's, I guess it's hovering still a little bit. But it's, uh, you know, it used to hover up here. Now it hovers down there. And what I did is it's got this, this plastic piece. I just put the screwdriver and put a little weight right there. That forced that to bend just, a, you know, a hair's tickle back down. I believe that's going to have her. And this one comes in. I'm using a pair of pliers to pull these back through because then I can get them to align and I can leverage them. All right, so we're at full rest here. This bottom one is off. The center, at least with the three of them in, the center one, no touching there. And the top one is off. When I roll forward, there the top two come together very firmly, as I'm sure they're supposed to. I'd say we got that okay. Now, this one. She needs a bit of a pre-wobbles, because she's got to go behind that plastic piece that it was originally bent by. Now we run her through her cycles. So the problem I'm dealing with now is, you know, I've, I've sanded these contacts off, so they're just a touch smaller than they used to be. And if you notice, when this last contact hits up there, it really doesn't lift it much. I mean, it is just the tiniest little connection. Well, that's probably what caused its problem to begin with. I'm wondering if I can get in there and just this little tiny, little tiny of encouragement. Right. Now we're lifting. Now we're cooking with gas. There, I'm in the rest position. This would be, my guess is off. Everybody's happy. Nobody's touching. Roll forward. Those two touch. And it lifts it. And it shoves it into the upper one. Upper one's touch. Coming around, coming around. Cycle's almost over. This little one kicks in here. And we're done. That's probably fan run. Cool down cycle and off. I bet you she's fixed. Oh, reassembly is like disassembly, only with uh, more hope and prayer involved. Ta da! That was fan. Hey, Buster. I think I got it fixed. Daddy? Yeah. That went there. The only thing I got to worry about 
because I pulled these pins out, they're going to be loose or looser. I got to make sure that when I push this down, I don't just shove all those pins backwards down inside. That got her. That got her. And that got her. All right. Now it should just be a matter of reinserting it in the hole. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay. Maybe I'll put this knob back on. Since you're making all the right noises, let's find out if it works. Heavy high, time dry. Now, if we've had no change, the fan will come on, it'll blow cold air and won't get warm. If I've had a positive change, the fan will come on. Poltergeist will attack you, and then it'll blow warm air, and joy and laundry pile can go away. If I've made it worse, then the fan won't come on. Here we go. Or the bike, you know, breaker could blow. God only knows. Here we go. You ready? Warm air. It worked. No. Yep, yep, yep. It's getting hot. All right. Let's try energy saver. <laughs> Warm air. Take that planned obsolescence. We win again. Until next time. Um, yeah, don't try this at home. I, I only did this for your own amusement. That's why I'm so damn funny and adorable. So if you chose to follow me, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. Actually, no. My insurance says I have to. But if you choose to follow me, um, you can do so at your own risk. As long as you got this big thing right here unplugged, so that the magic pixies can't, uh, you know, <laughs> set your legs on fire. There's really not much you can do wrong. Probably. Good luck!